Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be giving you guys a little tactical update on the situation by Bakhmut and Bilohorivka. Now this is a settlement I don't think I've like ever talked about, but there's an important battle going on for the settlement right now. The Russians have overrun some Ukrainian positions and are attacking inside of the settlement. A quick little bit of good news, the Ukrainians have pushed the Russians back a little bit in the Serbyansky forest, which I'm going to be honest is pretty much a gray zone, but Bilohorivka is important because this is the settlement that effectively controls this whole forest. Ukraine having positions inside of Bilohorivka helps them defend from flank attacks that the Russians may try to do while they're launching assaults into the Serbyansky forest. If the Russians do control up to here, then these attacks can get intercepted. So let's talk about the situation and what's going on here. We'll use the satellite images. This settlement was recaptured by the Ukrainians uh, right before the September 2022 Kharkiv counteroffensive. The Ukrainians wanted to prepare for their assault on Liman, so they decided to take this settlement to open up operations inside of the Serbyansky forest. For a while, the Ukrainians were holding defense in these tree lines to the east of the settlement. These big forests acted as nice natural barriers, but eventually Russia overran them at some point. The line of control moved up to this gray line, which to not be confusing, we'll just go ahead and move you up right here. Never mind, I'm going to redraw it. And this was the zone of control for a while. The Ukrainians controlled this big tree line and road going right through here, as well as this one to the left, and having control of these two allowed them to intercept any advancing Russian columns from this crossfire from both sides. In order to prevent flanking of this region, the Ukrainians also controlled this little belt of tree lines that goes up north, as well as this small junction of the rail line which is kind of split between Russia and Ukraine. However, the Russians have had a small breakthrough. A successful advance was able to capture this Ukrainian tree line, and with that one now being captured, it put the Ukrainians in this double tree line right here at risk, so they had to retreat as well. Right now, this black line is the current front line, so we'll just get rid of this to make it not confusing. And the Ukrainians are holding positions on the outskirts of the factories here. The good thing is, the Ukrainians still control this northern set of tree lines, which definitely helped. The Ukrainians actually lost control of this northern segment right up to to this backup sort of secondary tree line, but a recent counterattack was able to reestablish positions up north. Really quick side note, this is really sad. The um, satellite imagery is actually updated for this area, and you can just see how many shells have been dropped across this whole area. I don't understand how anyone can call this liberation. This is just horrible. But moving back, Ukraine still has some good advantages in defending this settlement. Something that's nice is the fact that they control this hill right here, which even though the Russians have pushed up to this area right here by these factories, the Ukrainians have good tactical overlook over them because of this hill. There's also a small river system which will prevent the Russians from moving heavy equipment over anything other than roads. Now, there's also two key pieces of geography that Ukraine controls that'll help. Why did the front line just... I deleted the entire front line on accident. Hello. Okay, we're back. <laughs> they control this small little forest tree group right here, as well as this one to the south as well. And this helps prevent the area get flanked from the south and having the hill to the south be overrun. What's this big white thing? I don't even know. Is this a salt mine? I mean, I'd guess that, but I mean, this kind of looks like, like marshmallows. One more thing before we move to Bakhmut. The new satellite imagery is released for, I think it's like the North Luhansk and Donetsk Oblast. It revealed this big trench fortification that the Ukrainians were using to protect Verkhno Kamyansky. This area has been holding since the summer of 2022, and it's a really good fortification. You can see some of the trenches going like zigzagging through here. I'll try to map them all out. There's a big line up north that kind of goes into a square pattern that like, goes around here and i'm trying to talk so i can fill in the time or i'm just gonna jump cut because i couldn't think of anything to say and this one especially is a very intricate and layered defense and that's probably why it's been holding for so long all right now moving on to bakhmut i'm just gonna let you guys know it's not it's not good news but it's not like horrible either the russians are trying to push into this area by bodanivka to reach chassis vr before the springtime they've had some small success taking over some positions so we'll get into that first one was this small tree line right here ukraine had actually recaptured this recently and the russians were able to push back the good news about the frequency of how much this goes back and forth is that it means that the situation slewed and the Russians likely have failed to consolidate the positions before, so it could happen again. But now that they pushed the Ukrainians out of here, this tree line and this small forest right here have become the main defense line. And this forest is important because it's the last thing that prevents Russia from getting onto the high ground right here by Kalin Nina. The Russians' main goal is to establish control over this whole plain right here, which will put them on even elevation with the Ukrainians to reach Chasiv Yar. And then from there, they want to take over Kalin and this whole area to have an elevation advantage over the Ukrainians and the rest of Budanivka, which will force the Ukrainians to retreat. That's why this forest right here is really important because this is the last actual fortification to prevent the Russians from flanking Bodanivka. The defense here is going to have to hold because even if the Russians push around it and through this area and take just this small tree line, that may lead to the collapse of the rest of Bodanivka as a settlement. From there, if they fail to take this forest but only take this tree line right here, I think the line will stabilize around the outskirts 
of Kalinina, as well as this forested tree line area right here. Speaking of the forested tree line area right here, the Russians have also advanced in this area. The Ukrainians were still holding a slight bit of defense in this uh, southern part of the tree line, as well as this one which ran across here. And the Russians have managed to advance in this field a little bit, but I think the worst part about it is that the Russians have taken over this small residential area right here. Right now, the Ukrainians have decent positions to fall back on. They still have this tree line, this whole railway, this tree line, this forest, this one, this one, this one. I could go over every tree line in Ukraine, but I think that'd be boring. So as long as defense is able to hold in this area right here, the advances will be halted for now. One more thing I forgot to say earlier, earlier is I think the bill in the US to get aid to Ukraine has split from the one in the border and it's been agreed to move to the House of Representatives. I'm not sure if Mike Johnson has said anything, but he did respond to that email that I sent him. And I, he seems receptive. It's a little unprofessional, but he said, I agree though. I low-key been bunking on Ukraine. I can't be doing that no more. I'm finna pass this package. So hopefully that aid will get unblocked. And that's all I've really got. I think Avdivka right now, there's something brewing in Avdivka, but it's too early to talk about it. And just not to get anyone hopes up i don't think it's a good thing so we'll see i'll give you guys an update video on avdivka tomorrow and that's all i've got i'll see you guys later